Within neurology, this has become so important, this neurological signature of a habit, that it's become known as the habit loop. And what this habit loop says is that every habit has three components. There's a cue, which is like a trigger for an automatic behavior to start. And then a routine, which is the behavior itself. And then finally, a reward, which is how your brain, in particular the part of your brain known as the basal ganglia, learns this pattern for the future. Now, for years, people have talked about habits, right, and changing habits, everyone from Oprah to Aristotle. And for the most part, they've all focused on the routine, on the behavior. But what we know from Dr. Grabiel's experiments and hundreds of other laboratories in the last decade is that it's the cue and the reward that really shape how a habit works. If you want to change a habit or create a habit, you need to focus on the cues and the rewards that determine them, and then the routine, the behavior itself, almost automatically follows. What does this mean for your companies and for your customers and for the communities that you live in? Well, I, let me answer that in two ways. The first of which is that I would suggest to you that what we're learning about habits empowers us to begin impacting our clients and our customers and our employees in ways that are both beneficial to them and in ways that are beneficial to us and in understanding who we're serving. And one of the best examples of this is Target. Target had this big problem, not problem, but opportunity a couple of years ago. Target wanted to figure out which of, it which of its customers were pregnant. Now the issue for Target is that when someone's pregnant, until they look like this, it's very hard to distinguish them from other customers who are not pregnant. And the reason why Target wanted to know which of its customers are pregnant is because, as many of you who are retailers in this room know, when someone is pregnant, they are a potential gold mine. And what they found are these interesting patterns, shopping habits that people start to exhibit when they're pregnant. Women who are pregnant in about the beginning of their second trimester start buying a certain number of vitamins. They weren't buying vitamins previously. Previously, if they're in their, about in their second, beginning of their second trimester, if they've been buying scented lotion, on average, they start buying unscented lotion. About midway through the third trimester, pregnant women, on average, will start buying a huge number of washcloths and cotton balls. Now, none of us, with the exception of the vitamins, would have thought of these predictors for pregnancy. And Andrew Pohl and his team came up with a brilliant habit loop. Figure out the one million pregnant people in our database, send them coupons for baby stuff, get them into the store, on a regular basis, and then start selling them orange juice and other stuff. So, they put together the mailers, they sent them out, and it was a disaster, total flop. Pregnant women who were in their second trimester, and in some cases hadn't told many people that they were pregnant, all of a sudden started getting all these coupons for diapers and for formula, and were super freaked out, because a store knew that they were pregnant, and they hadn't told that store. This is terrifying, right, to have a company know what's going on inside your body or inside your house without you telling them. So they shut down the entire program right away. They still have the pregnancy predictor um, algorithm running, but they're not using it for anything. And then someone in the marketing department says, let's run a little experiment. Let's take the coupons for the diapers and for the baby formula, and let's send them to people's homes, but let's camouflage them. Let's put them next to things that have nothing to do with babies. In fact, let's put them next to things that are anti-baby. So people started getting, pregnant women started getting coupons for diapers that were next to wine glasses, or advertisements for wine glasses, or advertisements for the Super Bowl, or advertisements for lawn mowers. They would purposely hide what they knew in order to slip the coupon into people's homes in a way that was unsuspecting to them and it worked like a dream. The Target, the, the, they, they launched the campaign, they sent it out to, first of all, some test markets and then went national with it. Target's mom and baby sales exploded, literally within months. It went from $44 billion to $65 billion over a three and a half year period. And the reason why I mention all of this, the Starbucks example and the Target example, is because, like, as I mentioned, I'm an investigative reporter at the New York Times. I spend most of my time going into companies and trying to do everything I can to put the CEO in prison. <laughs> and yet, I've been to company after company in reporting for this habit stuff. 
and have seen these companies get religion on understanding customers' habits or understanding employees' habits, on analyzing the cues and rewards that are driving people's behavior, and I'm firmly convinced that they're making the world a better place.